she was captivated by its beauty, instantly taken by its charm. It was more than a half century ago when one of the pioneers of the sport knew this was the place for her, for them, to build a life. So they bought it, and ever since then, all it's been doing for Peggy Kirk Bell is giving back. Having three women's open is a great honor. That first one 11 years ago told everyone that Annika Sorenstam was destined for greatness with her second straight open title. Five years later, Kari Webb celebrated her back-to-back -back wins, another Hall of Fame career punctuated by her sport's greatest achievement. And now, this year, 19-year-old Morgan Pressel looks to continue an incredible major run on the same course where she made history as a 12-year-old qualifier. Christy Kerr has waited 10 years to be called a major champion. But no one feels that burden more than the world's top-ranked player, Lorena Ochoa, who knows you need a little magic to win championships like these. To win the Open, you're in. You've made it. This is the biggest major championship in the world. And it's back at her home at Pine Needles. Designed by America's preeminent golf course architect, Donald Ross, Pine Needles opened in 1928. Now, almost 80 years later, it was the site of the 62nd United States Women's Open. The first round got off to a beautiful start for both the course and the defending champion, Annika Sorenstam. But both would change drastically. Annika was looking to defend her title on the same course where she won her second of three U.S. Women's Open championships back in 1996. The 36-year-old Swede, an eight-time LPGA Player of the Year, was at even par when she hit this tee shot at the third. She stuck it less than eight feet from the cup to set up a chance for her first birdie of the championship. That would be her only birdie on the front nine as she battled the elements and herself all day. Up at the par three fifth, Sorenstam off the tee. That's a perfect play, great shot. So she had this for birdie. Settled for par to remain at one under and was even making the turn. Then at the 10th, she once again had another chance for birdie. That got her to one under, but weather problems would cause her to finish her second round on Saturday. An early bogey at the 12th got her back to even par, heading to the 14th. Then on 15, she had another chance to get it back to red numbers. The birdie helped her to an opening round of 70, one under par and still very much in the hunt. Born in Brazil and raised in Southern California, Angela Park was in the midst of a breakout year on the LPGA Tour. After birdies at the first three holes of her opening round and shooting a blistering 31 on the front nine, it was becoming clear that Angela was going to be a force throughout. At the 12th, she had an eight-footer for birdie. Then at the next hole, Park's second shot. An opening round score of 68, and Angela Park was three under. At just 25, Lorena Ochoa is already one of the most popular athletes in her home country of Mexico. And at the 14th, she gave a glimpse why she's the world's number one ranked player. The spectacular eagle got it a two under par through 14. 
But at the 17th, a costly mistake for Lorena. From the rough, through the grandstands, and over a public road, which means that is out of bounds. She would go on to make double bogey there and finished with an opening round of even par. Still only 17 years old, Michelle Wee was playing in her fifth U.S. Women's Open. Battling a sore left wrist like she has all season long, she got off to a rough start. Already at plus two, she dropped another stroke here at the fifth. And she continued to struggle all day, finishing with an opening round of 82, 11 over, leaving a multitude of questions about her physical condition. United States Women's Open history was about to be written by a golfer just 12 years and four months old. And from Coral Springs, Florida, Alexis Thompson. And here she is in this group off the 10th, the youngest qualifier in the history of this U.S. Women's Open, eclipsing the previous record when Morgan Pressel became the youngest in 2001. So Alexis, who is homeschooled, just finished up the sixth grade, is on the tee in the sport's greatest championship. Second shot left her short of the green, leaving her this little chip shot. She'll have a little bit of lengthy putt there to avoid a bogey. Unfortunately, she couldn't convert the par putt. Still a respectable bogey for the preteen phenom. to 11 after an opening bogey. This is the second for Alexis Thompson at the 376 yard par four. Pretty lofted club, uh, short club, good shot. She would two putt for par there and went on to finish her historic round with a score of five over. One of the 35 Korean golfers in the field is LPGA rookie N.B. Park. Over at the ninth, that is N.B. Park's second shot at the short par four, and that is beautifully done. So she'll have that short putt to get to two under par. A bogey-free round helped her to a first round score of 69, as she would make the putt for her second birdie of the day. Since winning Rookie of the Year in 1999, Mi-Hyun Kim has won eight times on the LPGA Tour, Known as Peanut because of her diminutive frame, Kim was two under here at 13, trying to save par. She would finish the day with an even par score of 71, three strokes off the lead. Hoping to win her second U.S. Women's Open title was the 2005 champion, Birdie Kim. After making Birdie on her first hole, the 10th, she was in the middle of the fairway at the next. And over at the 11th, the winner at Cherry Hills, Birdie Kim. A fine approach shot left her just six feet from the hole. This for two in a row to start. And she hasn't even holed one from a bunker yet. <laughs> <laughs> An up and down first round for Birdie Kim left her at 73. The youngest player to ever win an LPGA major tournament is Morgan Pressel. Having won the Kraft Nabisco Championship back in April at the age of 18, the now 19-year-old Pressel managed an even par 71, thanks in part to this par putt at the eighth. From there, it was Mother Nature's turn as rain delayed play for three and a half hours, forcing round one to be completed on Friday. And when they did, the leaderboard saw Angela Park all alone on top with a three under 68. Inby Park and Shiho Oyama were one stroke behind, while Annika Sorenstam and six others were two shots off the pace. Lorena Ochoa, Christy Kerr, and Morgan Pressel were three of the nine women at even par, which meant that there were 19 women within three shots of the lead after day one, with Michelle Wee well off the pace. Day two of the U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles was a lot like day one. Rain, rain, and more rain. 
This time, play was halted twice, and for the second day in a row, the scheduled round of golf had to be completed a day later than planned. Still looking for her first major victory despite nine LPGA career wins was Christy Kerr. She had an up and down second round, managing just one par on her front nine, with three birdies and five bogeys, including one here at 18. Always one of the tour's steadier players, Kerr began to right herself here at the third. Just underneath the hole, she'd move a little right. She would play bogey-free golf over her last nine holes for a score of one over after 36. NB Park started the day at the 10th and was looking to grab a share of the lead with this birdie putt at 14. Oh, it just leaked off at the end. These greens are really speeding up. And then at 15, they got even faster. Up the hill should be turning a little left, but boy, that's got a lot of speed. Look out. Look out. That left her with a long comebacker just to save par. Well, left all the way, Gary. Yeah, that'll be her first bogey of the championship. But at the 16th, she would regroup. Park from out of the bunker. Oh, that's very nicely played. Park tapping in for a nice up and down par. She remained two under there and was minus two for her first nine holes Friday. NB Park's third shot at the par five first, just making the turn at two under, one off the lead. And it looks like we're gonna be double parked again at the top of the leaderboard. Again, a chance to join Angela at the three under number atop the leaderboard. Well, that was a superb little skip sand wedge to that point. Well done, NB. But up ahead at the par four second, NB ran into trouble on her third shot. Then from about where she hit her last shot, this chip was for par. Better than her first chip shot, but still she left herself farther from the hole than she would have liked. NB Park for bogey drive at least one here. Well, she has about eight feet, this putt, running away from her as the screen slopes from front to back. Crucial putt. Well done, that's a good bogey from there. NB made two other bogeys and was two over on the day, but even par for the championship. Morgan Pressel was one under par for the championship, heading into the eighth hole when she started to get hot. Taking sort of dead aim, isn't she? Left center at the most. Uh, can't tell if it's right center or left center from looking from there. Pretty straight. How about huh? straight? <laughs> <laughs> and how about a birdie for Pressel, who six years ago was the youngest qualifier in this championship before Alexis Thompson eclipsed her this year, but moves within one of the lead. Then at the 12th, she was looking to lower her score again. would leave her a seven-footer for birdie. Choking way down on it. That little move to her left. The confident Pressel would move to three under. But trouble ahead at the 15th. From behind the green, this to save par. She definitely whacked it. Oh! And it caught a lot of the hole. But it will be a bogey six for Pressel. She also made bogey at the 18th and finished one over par for the day and for the championship. The 2005 LPGA Rookie of the Year is 20-year-old Paula Creamer. And after a brilliant amateur career, Creamer has won three times on the tour. Here at the 13th, she was looking to get back to even par with this birdie try at 13. She would finish her first round at one over. She began the day three shots off the lead, but Mihu and Kim struggled Saturday. The bogey at the second hole dropped her to even par. And after a double at 13, she was again in trouble at the 14th. She had a tough go of it. She converted the nice chip to save par, but still shot 75 for the round. 
taking her to four over at the midway point. Having had her second round of golf rained out entirely Friday, Lorena Ochoa looked a little out of sorts Saturday. Man, she's making a bit of a mess out of this. After three bogeys in her first seven holes, she regrouped at 17. The birdie there, as well as two more, got her back to where she started the day, at even par. Another young Korean looking to make a name for herself is 19-year-old G.A. Shin. After a first round of one under, Shin was even better on Saturday when her second round took place. The birdie at 10 gets her to two under. And that's where she would be until she reached the 18th. Pretty doable putt, Johnny. It is, it definitely is. Shin is in with a birdie. That got her to three under, two strokes off the lead. Taiwan's Amy Hung also played her second round on Saturday, and the extra day of rest seemed to pay off. At the 12th, Hung putting for birdie. Beautifully done, Amy Hung, nice birdie. She improved to three under. Then at the 14th. What a shot. Wow. Whoa, that's a beauty there. She would par the hole and finish the day at three under, two off the lead. Looking for her second career major was the winner of the 2005 Women's British Open, John Jang. After a quiet first round of 72, Jang started to make some noise. The long birdie at the eighth helped her shoot an even par round, and she was just one over after 36. Another Korean looking to make a major mark was Shi Hyun An. Her second shot at the seventh from the middle of the fairway is a thing of beauty and helped her to a 36-hole score of even par. How about that tempo, Gary? Yeah, beautiful. Just uh, very slow, very smooth, and a very good shot. Looking for her second career win on the LPGA Tour was the pride of Paraguay, Julieta Granada. Where Julieta Granada has this uh, uphill putt for birdie, chance to get it to two under. Now two under, just two off the lead. And then at the eighth, she did it again. Has a chance to get within one of the lead. Yes! Another birdie at the ninth made it three in a row for Granada. The only thing that could slow her down was a bumblebee as she finished round two with a 69. Three under par and two shots off the pace. Trying to recapture some of that magic from two years ago, Birdie Kim shook off an opening round 73 and came out firing on day two. And Birdie's got two birdies in the first three holes to move it back to even. She would finish the round at one over for the championship. As for the defending champion, Annika Sorenstam, she got off to a horrible start. A double bogey at the 10th, and things wouldn't get much better at the next hole. Does such a good job of keeping these shots simple. But she that's got to be careful. There's a runoff right back there. Goodbye. She is just out of sync today. All those shots left at 10, and then uh, more bad stuff going on here at 11. Then at 13, trying to save par. Oops. More of the same at 15. Oh, I have 
not seen her play golf like this very often. More troubles for Annika at the seventh. And then at the eighth, a chance for her lone birdie of the round. Thorn Stam's birdie try, Andy. Up the hill, right to left, kind of how a player loves. Yeah. So one of the few birdieable holes here. The par four eighth, Annika tackles it, gets it back to plus five. The second round score of 77 had Annika tied for 49th. Pat Hurst finished second to Annika in the 18-hole playoff last year at Newport Country Club. Here with a birdie try at the seventh. And on 10, the veteran would do it again. Got it. Hurst made the cut, but would never be a factor at Pine Needles. Meanwhile, 12-year-old Alexis Thompson was trying to follow up her first round score of 76, but day two proved to be more difficult. Her second shot at 12 falls off the back of the green. And at 13, Thompson had this for birdie. Nevertheless, the youngster seemed to be enjoying herself immensely as she finished up her two rounds of play with a smile on her face, despite missing the cut. Things weren't any better for Michelle Wee on Saturday morning as she was finishing up her second round. Already at plus 15, she goes from the rough to the bunker. That's that cross bunker. That was a pretty good shot. She could have kept that little cut to the left, but uh, squirted right. Never missed a cut in a major. It was apparent that her wrist was still giving her problems, and after only 27 holes, Michelle Wee withdrew from the championship. Paula Creamer's second round got off to a fine start at the third. Creamer with a chance to get it to even. So Creamer won under in the early going today. But bogeys at the 13th, 14th, and 15th holes would leave her at four over, and she would finish the championship five over. Another rising star on the LPGA Tour who is still looking for her first professional win is Natalie Gulbis. After an opening round of 74, Gulbis was looking to get a birdie here at the 12th. And the third shot for Natalie Gulbis from well over the green. Good news is pitching back up the hill at the start, and it hits the crest right about there. Should release down to the hole to the right. Boy, this is nicely played. She would go on to make that for par and remain at plus three. She was again putting for birdie at the next hole. Over to 13, Golbus for birdie. Not a lot of break, but she gave it too much borrow. Golbus still searching for the first win, has the most career earnings in LPGA history without one. And now Natalie Golbus for birdie at the 16th. Moves a little right. And that is tracking, just dumps over the front edge. So Gulbis, who has been having some uh, back problems this year, has withdrawn from a number of events, hanging in there at plus three. She was faced with another long putt at the finishing hole. At 18, Gulbis for par. Missed the green right tip to this point. That's a tough read. You think it might break from back to front, but it just stayed dead straight. She would tap in for bogey and a one over round of 72. Golbis plus four at the halfway point. First round leader Angela Park showed no signs of giving up the lead in the second round. She was three under through nine when she had this birdie putt at the first. Very bankable putt, just moves a little bit from left to right. A little bit uphill. So Park has a lead by herself, 18 years old. Then at the seventh, she was again putting for birdie. Oh. 
was a two-shot lead for Park, who improved to five under. And then, at the final hole. A long par saver to hang on to her lead by two. So halfway through the 62nd U.S. Women's Open, only five golfers were under par, headed by Park at five under. Ochoa and N.B. Park were among five other women who were at even par after 36, while Christy Kerr was one of 12 women at one over, five shots ahead of Annika Sorenstam with two rounds left to play. Because of the inclement weather that delayed much of the first two rounds, a majority of the players only played a portion of their third round on Saturday. Lorena Ochoa started her round five behind as she looked to make a move. Ochoa nearly reached the par five first and two. Missed her third shot. She's number one on tour in total. Eagles! And the eagle catches that would have been her the She would go on to make birdie there at the first. And then up at the third tee, Ochoa continued her aggressive play. one needs to come down. So Ochoa is going to have birdie tries at the first three holes. So a chance to get it to two under. Yes, another birdie for Ochoa. Watch out. To two under. Two out of the first three. Could have very easily been a three birdie start. Ochoa would continue her third round on Sunday very much in contention. Coming off a second round score of 69, G.A. Shin was hoping for more success on the first hole of her third round. She's moving it left to right, and this has hit plenty good. This is a good shot here. How about stiff? Oh, shot yes. of the shot is going to have an eagle try. She would miss the short putt for eagle and settle for birdie to move to four under. N.B. Park was at even par through her first two rounds and got off to a nice start by making birdie on the first hole of her third round. First and second round leader Angela Park continued her brilliant play on the first hole of her third round. This is a big putt for her. Good looking stroke. Oh man. That would get her to six under for the championship. Christy Kerr made her move Saturday afternoon. Birdie at the fourth, and then she had this for two in a row. Yeah. Kerr to one under. After a second round 77, Annika Sorenstam was hoping to regroup. It's an important putt, easy par five. Yeah, good start for Annika. That's where her day ended as darkness settled on Pine Needles. A new day for Annika saw more of the same. Here at the ninth and a chance for birdie. That's kind of the tale of her round today. Just uh, not making many putts. She'll finish at uh, one over par in the third round and six over par for the championship. Another former champion, Bertie Kim, was doing all she could do to remain in contention. Her approach at the 18th set her up nicely for a chance at Bertie. And no oh, on the edge. That cannot stop her. Oh. The near birdie, and after three rounds, she was one over for the championship. Amy Hung was tied for second at the midway point and was looking for birdie here at the 15th. Turning a little to the right, and Amy Hung back to one under par for this championship. But at the 17th, she would give it back. A round of four over par left her at plus one through three rounds. Julieta Granada's day wasn't any better than Hung's. Granada for par. 
And that's another bogey. A bogey at 17 was her fifth of the round, and Granada was at two over. But on the finishing hole, she had a chance to get that stroke right back. The long birdie left her at one over, heading into the final round. G.A. Shin's round concluded on Sunday morning, here at the 17th. That is a beautiful save for G.A. Shin. Just 19 years old, staying within one of the lead. She would end two shots back at three under. Trying to stay close, John Jang, who was at even par and looking to improve at the 15th. Currently sitting at even par. That left hole location here today with the greens a little softer this morning. We're seeing some good shots and some birdies. And she certainly will have a chance to get it to one under there. She did convert that to finish at even par after three rounds. NB Park finished her third round on Sunday the same way she started it. A near miss for Birdie there at 18. NB Park was at even par for the day and for the championship. Angela Park had dropped back to four under when she made this terrific chip at the 13th. Wow, the shot. Oh, wow. Nearly made a two out of it. She would save par there, and then at the 14th, she had this for Birdie. Oh. How about this? Oh, just ran out at the end. But at the 15th, she ran into trouble. Ooh. Chunked it again. Wow. She would bogey the hole to go back to three under. Then at the 18th, more problems. Uh-oh. This was hit pretty uh -oh. good. Uh-oh. This was slammed. Making it tougher for herself than needs to be. Another bogey had Park at two under, heading into her final round. Hoping to win her second major of the year, Morgan Pressel started to come on strong. Her third shot from just off the green at the 12th was perfect and got her to four under par for the championship. Then at the 16th, another great chip. Very crisply struck and nicely judged. Beautifully judged. Well, that was textbook. She saved par there and had a chance to do it again at the 18. Morgan Pressel just made par. What a way to go into the final round. Oh, that's a great round, 69. And that left her at three under par with 18 holes to play. As for Lorena Ochoa, she too started to heat up. The birdie try at 12 is good and got her to five under par and into the lead. But at the 14th, she had some problems. Never started on the right line and it's gotten away from her as well. That would drop her back to four under. And that's where she would be as she stepped up to her tee shot at 18. She bombing her drives. I don't think I've ever seen her drive this well. Up at the green, Ochoa would have this for birdie. Oh, it's got too much speed. And then to just save par. And that for a 67 no. That's too bad there. She would settle for a 68, three under for both the round and the championship. That left the door open for Christy Kerr. The birdie here at the 15th was her sixth of the round and got her to four under. And then two holes later, she tried for another. 17, Kerr for birdie. And she is in fuego with the putter. Oh! Wow. And 
Then at the 18th, she capped off a brilliant round. There it is, the round of this championship so far, a 66 for Christy Kerr. Five under for the day had Kerr at four under for the championship with only one round to go. So after three rounds, Kerr had a one-shot lead over Ochoa, Morgan Pressel, and G.A. Shen, with Angela Park two shots behind at two under. The leaders would have only two hours to wait before teeing off for the final round of the most celebrated championship in women's golf. And weather would not be a factor for a change as sunshine prevailed throughout the afternoon at Pine Needles, setting the stage for a dramatic conclusion to the 62nd U.S. Women's Open. Annika Sorenstam was never in contention after the first round, but the defending champ still had her moments. The birdie at the 12th got her to nine over. And then on 17, an even more impressive putt for the three-time Open champion. Sorenstam would finish it eight over for the championship. The winner of five major championships, including the 98 U.S. Women's Open, is Seiri Pak. 24 Korean women made the cut in this year's championship, and a lot of that has to do with Pac. Gary, this is the player who really started it all, right? She did, by winning this championship back in 1998. She would birdie the 15th hole. After a 68 in her third round, she was at it again. It's a very flat green. That's a rare birdie. And it's so good to see Sari Pak playing well again. Moves to one under. Second birdie in the last three holes. Then at the 18th. Sari Pak for birdie. What a back nine this has been for Sari. Birdie's at 15, 17. This to get to two under. Moves a little left. And 18, and how about the final round? 68 for Say Ree. Low final round of the day. As for Christy Kerr, she picked up right where she left off in her third round. The birdie here at the third got her to five under. But on the eighth, she would give that stroke back. With 10 holes to play, Kerr and Ochoa were tied at four under. But at the 10th, both were in trouble. Ochoa went from one bunch of pine needles to another, getting a quick reminder of what course she was playing. And things weren't much better for Kerr. Despite their problems, both would scramble for pars and remain tied with eight holes left. After topping the leaderboard after both the first and second rounds, Angela Park was now looking to play catch up at the 12th. And if this will hold, this will leave a nice putt for Birdie, and it does. And Johnny, another good shot from Park. And that would set Angela up for this. There we go. Bide your time. Watch out, for ah. Angela. Now within one of the lead. NB Park was also in the hunt. Here at the 15th, she closed the gap. NB Park for birdie after that nifty little pitch from short of the green. Pretty straight putt here. Nicely done. A hole behind at 14 was the aforementioned Kerr. Well, that was a good swing right there. A little left, maybe. This ball toward the center of the green. Not bad at all. Tied with Kerr at four under was Ochoa. This ball toward the center of the green as well. Comes up a little short, maybe. Get up on. No, nope. short of the green, about 80 feet away. G.A. Shin began her round just two off the lead, but here at the 15th, she ran into trouble. This is the birdie she needs right here, Gary. 
careful, be careful, be careful. Ooh, oh, what there it goes. Very unlucky, very unlucky. One foot too far. Shin for par. Must make a Gary here. I would certainly think so, Johnny. Looking forward to breaking. Would not. A costly bogey. And she would finish the championship at even par. Back at 14, Kerr for the outright lead. There it is. Tracking and Christy Kerr. What a birdie on the, one of the hardest holes. Moves to five under with a lead by one. What a three. But Angela Park was hanging tough at 15. Been a tough putt to read. To go left and then actually try to go back right at the hole, but she reads it perfectly. Yeah. Angela Park to four under. Golden girl. And guess what? Christy Kirk could hear that. And while Park was getting closer, Morgan Pressel was falling further back. I can see it perfectly from here. Pressel comes to this hole just two back and all of a sudden is four behind. Pressel would never get any closer to Kerr or Ochoa and finished tied for 10th at three over. As for Ochoa, she too was at the 14th trying to save par. Clutch putt by Ochoa, but it's Christy Kerr who reels off her second birdie at a difficult hole to take the lead by one with four holes to play. At 15, Ochoa would run into trouble. See if she can turn it loose on Roger and take the advantage, uh, you know, with her distance. Important for her to hit a good tee shot here, you bet. This is turning left. It's going to miss left. Uh-oh. And things weren't much better for Park at 16. Let's hit it a little left, Johnny. Oh, and it catches one of those shoulders, and that will be one tough bunker shot. Meanwhile, Kerr wouldn't let up. Ball turning down the left hand side, left center. Well, that's actually going to be just fine. She's holding it together, Gary. But the same could not be said for Ochoa. I wouldn't think she could uh, hit any more than six iron tops to clear this uh, embankment immediately in front of her. She had a good lie, however. You know, this one's kind of miss hit to the right. That is not a good play. This does not look good, Roger. Well, the lies is good or better than she could have hoped for. A clean lie over here, but she does have a tree limb immediately in front of her. She's going to have to keep the ball underneath. 136 yards of the hole, going to have to try to run the ball up. Danger here if it carries a little too far. It's going to go over the green. This hole is causing her maybe to lose the championship. Tied with Ochoa, one stroke back of Kerr was Angela Park here at the 16th with a chance to tie for the lead. This will be the biggest putt of her career. 18 years old, chance to win the U.S. Women's Open. Oh, she had a good putt. Wow, that's a good putt, Mark. Yes, it was. Did everything but go in. So with only two holes left to play, Park remained one shot back at Kerr. At 15, Kerr had a chance to distance herself from those chasing her. Oh, look at this, look at this. This could miss the green. Left, this could miss the green. That might be one of the uglier chip shots ever. Still on the 15th, Ochoa would try to stay within a shot. putt for par. Should turn a little left. Yes, she chases it right into the hole. That's a whole bunch of heart right there. That was not a pretty par, but that was one gutsy one. And Kerr would answer. Good 
confident stroke. Christy Kerr retains the one-shot lead with just four holes left. Ahead at the 17. Angela Park needs this to stay in it. The bogey dropped Park to two under, three shots back, heading to her final hole. And Kerr wouldn't let up, her tee shot at 17. That is, that is phenomenal. That is, she couldn't hit it any better. Now it was Ochoa's turn. And Ochoa, one behind with everybody else kind of fizzling out. It's, it's come down to the two best players in the game without a major here, separated by one shot. Kerr has put a lot of pressure on her to hit this fairway, this tough fairway to hit. Tugged her last driver. A lot of speed at the bottom there, and it's going left, It's maybe. going left. Uh-oh. Shot that has plagued her in pressure situations. And it's gone left again for Lorena Ochoa at the second to last hole. That is in the bunker, we understand. Now in trouble and a stroke behind Kerr, Ochoa had a tough decision to make. Play it safe or take a chance. A lot of times if you lay it up to a good number, Roger, you make par half the time, huh? Sure, I, I agree with that. And uh, she's also holding one with the fairway wood from a bunker this week. Yeah, she's got another fairway wood she's out gonna here. She's going to try to go for it. And there is a pretty good lip right here. You can see the lip, how high it is. You know, I don't know. I guess it's okay, Roger. Is this a good it is. smart she doesn't shot? Have, she doesn't have to play across that. So okay. this is this is okay. From 225, Roger. 225, got to make a contact. What That's a, the issue. What a shot. Topped it. Uh -oh. And right on top of the ball, and it's in the primary rough and looked to settle down. I think she should have laid it up to a good number. I, that is just asking too much. Another yep. women's open unraveling for Ochoa. Looking to finish strong and put herself in position for a possible playoff was Angela Park. Needs this to get to three under. And this just gently breaks to the left a little bit. Coming off back-to-back -back bogeys. It's not that hard to putt. And finally, Angela Park's putter heats up here at a great time. What a time to make a putt. So the 18-year-old is still alive. Park would be the first to the clubhouse, finishing at three under. Back at the 17th, with Kerr in the center of the fairway and having a seemingly comfortable lead, all she had to do was avoid any costly mistakes. Just now from 176 yards, Jenny, and I would imagine the center of that green looks pretty inviting right well, now. She's going to try another seven iron. Yeah, yeah, she's hit it solid, very high, and at the center of the green. She's playing good golf, Roger. She's really playing good, solid golf. So while Curl was safely on the green, Ochoa needed to make something happen. Yeah. Roger, this thing could do anything from this lie. Yeah, it's just over 160 yards. I didn't get a chance to see it look like John Lewis. It went, it hung on the top of the grass for like two seconds, and then it just sunk. Just anything on the middle of the green would be nice. Got to hope for a miracle up and in. This one needs to get a hop. It does. Tell you what, that <laughs> is pretty good. This is a great recovery for Ochoa. How about that distance control out of that lie? So Angela Park is the leader in the clubhouse at three under. Kerr on in regulation at 17, and Ochoa scrambling to stay in it. Safely on in regulation, Kerr could afford to two-putt for par, but was hoping for an insurance birdie. Well, it's, her putter has been her friend for the whole championship. See if it continues here. Good speed. Very good speed. Uh, par is great on this tough hole. She's very pleased with that leave. Show is a long way away for hers. But with her already having made par, Ochoa would need this to stay within a shot. This would be one of the great up and ends. Yeah, this to go not, down this is not a hard lead. Not a hard putt, a very flat green, Roger. Yeah, there's not much break in this putt. 
good run. Oh, she hit it right where she wanted, and it broke maybe an inch and a half, just enough to make it miss. With one hole to play, Christy Kerr had a two-shot lead heading to the tee. Well, she's never hit a bigger tee shot in her life than this one, Dottie. No, she certainly hasn't. Uh, ideally, it would come in from the right. It is a little bit downwind, but a miss to the left is really bad news. That is some of the thickest rough on the entire golf course. And a flare to the right in the trees is no good. I don't hear a caddy saying good shot. This nope. ball should be okay right down the fairway line or the rough line on the left. Uh, Did it reach the fairway? That's oh, it's perfect. Great shape. Yeah. Yeah. Right down the middle. Gonna make it uh, even tougher for Ochoa to get that two-shot swing. Roger. I lost sight of it. She's leaning left, though. It's up the right in the rough. Sort of a response to the probably the last hole, Dottie. Sakura so in good shape, looking for her first major championship. That elusive victory was now within Kerr's grasp. This from 146, and it's hit very high, and it's right of the hole at the right center of the green. Okay. Kerr doing all the right things down the stretch to win her first major. And with that shot, Kerr had effectively eliminated the world's top-ranked golfer. A good save here for Ochoa. Yeah, this is worth a few dollars right here. Time for second. So Lorena will have to wait for her major championship day to come later. 71 for her. 37 coming home on the back nine. Ten top ten finishes in majors, but for Kerr, never a win until now. And Christy Kerr has her major championship, the biggest one of all, and finally just overcome with emotion the 2007 U.S. Women's Open champion. No feeling like it in women's golf. Christy, many people said that you and Lorena were the two best players not to have won a major. I guess they can't say that about you anymore, <laughs> can they? How's it feel? No, you know, I, today was my day, obviously, that, that birdie at 14 was unbelievable, you know, and to hold it together coming in and make some big putts all week, you know, it's just a dream come true. After going winless in 41 major championships, Christy Kerr had finally broken through. She finished with a one under par score of 70, five under for the championship, two shots in front of Ochoa and Angela Park, three ahead of N.B. Park and Seri Park. G.A. Shin finished all alone in sixth at even par, while Morgan Pressel slipped to a tie for 10th at three over. For the third time in 11 years, Pine Needles have been the home for the best that women's golf has to offer. Angela Park showed the grace, poise, and heart that has made her a rising star on tour at the age of 18. And 19-year-old Morgan Pressel showed that her major win back in April was possibly the first of many. Lorena Ochoa is the world's top-ranked women's golfer and gave every indication that she will one day have that elusive first major championship. But in the end, it was Christy Kerr who would persevere to claim the most prestigious title in women's golf. Kerr, the 2007 U.S. Women's Open Champion.